My name is Vinny B. The title of this message is Apostles. We're going to give some scriptural, biblical uh, truths, some prophetic keys about the apostolic ministry. Um, there, uh, are there still apostles and prophets for today? Yes, there is. However, there are very few false apostles. I'm sorry, there are very few apostles and prophets today that are true. Um, in order for... Um, there to be a fake twenty dollar bill that has to be a real twenty dollar bill so in order if there's false apostles and prophets that means there are real ones so we have to acknowledge the fact that there are true apostolic prophetic ministries out there so the first thing we need to know about the apostolic ministry um, is that the first thing we need to know about the foundation of Christ is that it's an apostolic ministry okay uh, we're going to talk about Jesus, the Apostle, okay? Uh, if you turn your Bible to Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1, Jesus, the Apostle, says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the Apostle and High Priest of our profession, Jesus Christ. Clearly, Jesus Christ was an ap apostolic ministry. However, having said that, um, notice when Jesus came to the earth, he didn't just go to the cross, okay? Um, um, so having said that, he took 12 apostles, you know, out of three and a half years of ministry, he only preached to the crowds 37 times and sent the rest of them out to preach for him, okay? He anointed the 12. He spent all night in prayer, praying to the Father, whom he may choose to anoint to be apostle, Okay, and he sent them out to preach and teach. He sent them out by twos. Okay, they preached, they taught, and they healed. Okay, so uh, having said that, Jesus the Apostle. Now we're going to confirm that Jesus, according to Scripture, not only stood in the office of an Apostle, but he stood in every office and operated, in, and obviously he operated in all nine gifts. So, um, so we confirm that Jesus was an Apostle according to the Scriptures. Now, Jesus the prophet. We're going to talk about Jesus the prophet, okay? Um, we know that Jesus was a prophet because he called himself a prophet. Uh, in Mark chapter 6, verse 4, he said, it says, uh, Mark chapter 6, verse 4, But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, among his own kind, in his own, in his, in his house. He was talking about himself, so clearly Jesus was a prophet. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, Jesus the pastor. We're going to talk about Jesus. He was a pastor. Okay, Jesus walked in the office of a pastor. The Greek word for shepherd, it's translated pastor. Okay, and Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gave his life to the sheep, as we know he did so. Okay, so a pastor... You know, as Paul was operated in this office too. Paul said, "Is death in me, but life in you." I'm going through all this persecution, all this war for denying my flesh daily. All this just for the anointing, just for the grace of God to minister to you by the Spirit. It's death in me, but life in you. Okay, so that's what an apostle is supposed to do. Okay, um, you're supposed to uh, greater love is this that you lay your life down for your brethren so anyways um jesus the evangelist we're not talking about jesus he was an evangelist jesus was in the office of an evangelist because he said that the spirit of the lord is upon me the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel okay preaching the gospel is one of the evangelist's main function is to preach the gospel so clearly he was an evangelist because he went from town to town city to city so he evangelized okay this is the ministry of an apostle we're talking about here okay um jesus the teacher okay jesus taught as a teacher okay matthew chapter 7 verse 28 and 29 and it came to pass when jesus had ended these things the people were astonished at his doctrines for he taught them as one having authority notice he taught them he taught as one having an, uh, an authority and not as the scribes so clearly jesus stood in every office as a teacher as well so uh, 
So even as Paul the Apostle operated in all nine gifts of the Spirit. So as an apostle, as an apostle, he walked in every office. So a chosen apostle will stand in every office. We need to learn that about the apostolic ministry. They will operate in every office. Okay. And one thing about an apostle is that you get the fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangel um, uh, evangelist, teacher. Apostle is the thumb. And without the fivefold ministry, the, the, the spirit can't really grab a hold of the church as he want to, uh, as he should, you know. Ministry. We, we need it. Uh, sooner or later, you're going to need apostolic counsel. So having said that, the apostle has, if he has to have every gift, he has to have every office in order to impart the gifts in the churches, in order to build churches, not so much as church buildings, but to establish you. Paul said to, um, to uh, my desire is to establish you in a gift, that you'd be established in your gift. So the apostle has to be able to touch everybody in the body of Christ. He has to be able to build and touch and edify, confirm. He, ha he knows it by the Spirit. You're called to this. You're called to that. Pray about the office of a teacher. Pray about the office of an apostle. He lays hands and imparts a spiritual gift. Okay, because Paul said to Timothy, he says, uh, For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a peace, power, love, and a sound mind. But before he said that, he said to stir the gift, stir the gift by the laying on of my hands. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> So we see that the apostle has to has the ability, he has to operate in every gift and in every office in order to impart and to lay hands on the saint and impart the mantle and impart an office or a gift. So he has to operate in all of them in order to build the church of God. You got apostles out there that are so called apostles that have apostles and prophets, young children chosen to minister and they're not really building them up. They're not letting them minister with the grace God has called them to do. But I'm going to get into that in another teaching. So, um, so anyways, um, so, so a person called to be an apostle, then through faithfulness to his church and the ministry of helps, with the grace they are given to preach in that church, then as a result of faithfulness, then they are sent out by the church through the Spirit. I hope you caught that. And now that uh, now that this person is now this person becomes a sent one. Okay. Um Jesus Christ in the scriptures, um according to the scriptures, Jesus Christ was sent out. Okay. Um the word apostle, Jesus stood in the office of an apostle. The word apostle comes from the Greek word. Apostolos is pronounced A P O S T O L O S, which means sent one. As we know, Jesus Christ is the head of sent ones because his father sent him. Okay, so, um, okay, so having said that, a person that is an apostle is sent out by the church through the Spirit. Okay, um, first of all, in Ephesians chapter 4. As we know, the God, when he ascended on high, he gave, he gave gifts to men. Their apostles, first, second, po uh, prophets, teachers, and evangelists. You know the list. Okay, Corinthians, it says, he set in the church apostles and prophets. Why am I saying that? It's God who ordains. It's God who sets. You got a lot of people claiming to be apostles and prophets, but no power. Okay, no power. But we're going to get into that. Okay. Um, I got my notes here. Um, so if we look at, if, if we go to, um, the book of Acts chapter 13, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 13. Remember, as a man is found faithful in the ministry of helps, serving his pastor, serving the prophet, serving the apostle serving in his church with the grace God has called them to minister or to preach. Uh, I'm talking to ministers here. Um, being found faithful. Now Paul preached and taught at the church of Antioch for many years as Paul, not the apostle. 
Okay, he preached and he taught. He even went to the wilderness. He went to the mountains of Arabia where he got the revelation. Um, where he got revelation knowledge. I don't want to get too deep into that right now. But anyways, um, he was found faithful. The Bible says in Corinthians that a man has to be found faithful. Okay, so um, Paul was a prophet and a teacher before he became an apostle. Remember, an apostle is a sent out one. Okay, Paul was a prophet and a teacher. Now, the Bible says that the prophecy of Scripture, in Timothy, the Bible says that the prophecy of Scripture did not come by the origin of the will of man, but each man spoke as they moved by the Holy Ghost. So we know that the prophets wrote the Scriptures. Having said that, Paul was clearly a prophet because he had the anointing, the prophetic anointing, to write one-third of the Bible. So, uh, so he was a prophet first, okay? Uh, very few prophets are chosen to carry the, uh, the ministry of an apostle, okay? Uh, a, the, the ministry of an apostle isn't an office. It's a ministry that some prophets are chosen to carry. For an example, as the Lord elevated disciples to apostles, the Lord elevated me from prophet to the apostolic, okay, as I was sent out by my church, okay, by, pro by uh, Prophet Douglas. All right, so having said that, my spiritual father, Prophet Douglas, is not chosen to walk in the apostolic ministry. Rather, he's chosen to pastor one particular church. However, very few prophets um, uh, is, is elevated to that office, okay? So, now before I go on any farther, let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse, verse 1. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, as Barnabas and Simon, that was called Nager and Lysiris, of Cyrene and Menon, which had been brought up with Harold to the Tetrit and Saul. Okay, uh, verse 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 two says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Now this is the church. The Holy Ghost said, "Separate me, Barnabas and Saul." Notice he's still called Saul. He's not the apostle yet. Okay, he's still a prophet and a teacher. Uh, said apostle, I'm sorry, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work I called them. Okay, notice they're called. But now they're cho they're called for many years. All are called, but few are chosen. That's not talking about sinners. That's talking about those in the body of Christ. All are called in the body of Christ, but few are chosen for a good work. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Anyways, because a, a lot of people are dismissed because of foolishness. Anyways, as they... Uh, the word separate here, in the Greek, it means chosen. <laughs> chosen. Okay. I have chosen. Now, he beca because of faithfulness, he's chosen. And now he is sent out. Okay. Of course, he wasn't sent out by himself. Okay. So, if you have your Bible, turn to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. We have a lot of renegades. Um, Douglas Douglas calls them calls them renegades, and I I I, I call them lone rangers. Same thing. Uh, spirit of independence. They like to go ahead of the Holy Spirit. Notice the Spirit says, "Separate me, Saul and Barnabas." Okay. Um, uh, you have to be. Jesus said, "I don't do nothing unless I see my Father do it." A lot of people are going ahead of the Father. They're going ahead of the Father, and no wonder why no miracles and signs and wonders are following, because they're operating in their own authority. The Bible says that there is a man named John sent from God. Either you're going to be sent in your own authority, or you're going to be sent under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Wait, be found faithful, serve, and obedience. Okay? Um, be found faithful in the ministry of helps. Your gift will make room for you. And keep in mind, if you're anointed, there's always going to be a speaker before you and after you. There's always going to be people, other ministers in that place that ain't anointed, that are always going to try to take the mic out from under you. 
but if you hang, but your gift will make room for you. You will eventually get the mic. You will get the minister with the grace God has given to you. Not to men, not to mention, before church or after church through telephone, you can minister to your friends, to the people in the congregation. You know, um, but anyways, um, remember the man has to be found faithful before he's ever chosen for a good work by the Spirit. Okay. Uh, let's go to Hebrews chapter chapter 1, chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. It says, every, every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men, and these things pertain to God. So we see that God chooses ministers, apostles, prophets, teachers, and evangelists, those who, men and women, those who are found faithful to the mantle that they were up under, those that are found faithful to the, the, the people that God has placed, the elders that God has placed them with. Now, verse 4, and note confirms it. Verse 4, no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was of Aaron. Okay? When you go ahead of, when you go ahead of the Spirit, when you go ahead of the appointed time of the Father, Galatians chapter, chapter 4 says that we're under tutors and governors of the church until the appointed time of the Father. When we go ahead of the Father, we are exalting our office. We are exalting our ministry. We're exalting ourselves. And that is going on everywhere. Anyways, it, the Bible makes it clear. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as of Aaron. Also, so also, verse 5, Christ glorified not himself to be made high priest. But he was made high priest. And, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. Okay. Jesus did not exalt himself to be made high priest because he humbled himself up under John the Baptist, who was from the who who was from a family of priests. Okay. His father was a priest. So that shows you that God chooses priests from among priests, and ministers from among ministers. Okay, Jesus needed John the Baptist for the transfer of the priesthood. Okay, without that, you're not going to operate under the gift of faith to do signs and wonders. It's just not going to happen, folks. Okay, you have to be in the family. All right. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's go to uh, 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 Mark chapter Mark chapter sixteen verse twenty. Mark chapter sixteen verse twenty. And talking about the disciples of Jesus. And remember, they were sent by God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them. Notice the Lord was working with them. And confirming the word with signs and wonders. Amen. <laughs> Anyways, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock. Over, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God. Are you seeing what I'm saying? So, it's the Holy Ghost, it's God who sets in the church apostles and prophets and not man. We got a lot of them, with a, we got a lot of apostles and prophets and teachers out there, but no power. Okay, a lot of them saying, prophesying, and thus saith the Lord, and thus saith the Lord, and no power, no anointing, no presence. Okay, signs and wonders is an indicator that one is sent from God. Cornelius said to Jesus, not Cornelius, I'm sorry, who was that? Nicodemus said to Jesus, obviously God is with you seeing these signs and wonders follow, these miracles follow. Uh, so anyways, let's go and um, take a look at something right here. So, we broke down in the spirit did how apostles operate in every gift and every office okay and god appoints these things because the grace of god is on their life to do so they identify the elect okay if you know you're chosen of god and you know you're chosen for good work and that apostle isn't uh, isn't acknowledging you and to serve in his church, and he's bringing other ministers in from outside the church, uh, 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 that's not a good sign. Uh, but however, your gift will still make room for you. Stay there. Stay there. Okay? Because you, you may not be there for him, if you know what I mean. Or her. But I'm going to leave that alone for right now. 
So anyways, uh, let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. Okay. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. And he doesn't, he doesn't tell them, I am the Christ. I am God. He doesn't tell them that. In fact, you know, Jesus said, I don't testify of myself, but there's one who does. Okay. And we know who that is. All right. Um, but rather, he asked a question in Matthew chapter 16, verse 15. And Simon answered, first Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Some said Elijah, some say John the Baptist. Okay. Uh, verse 16, and Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Okay. And Jesus uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Okay. So, the Father revealed who Jesus was. Okay. You have people who have seen Jesus had no clue who he was. No clue of who he was. Okay, so, and you have those who seen him, or who haven't seen him, and has a revelation of who he is. So, clearly, God can only be revealed by the Spirit. Okay, so, having said that, Peter, being in the presence of God, God the Father revealed the nature of Jesus, who Jesus was. Having said that, he was getting fed. Every time Simon, every time Jesus preached a sermon, Simon Peter, I believe personally, he was getting more revelation knowledge than any of them, in my own opinion. People who lack the revelation of Christ don't quite read the scriptures from a prophetic expression, but more from a theological, religious expression. Like the Pharisees and Sadducees, they knew the first, they can quote the first five books of the Living Bible, uh, thinking that they had eternal life, but they speak of Christ and they didn't recognize him. So anyways, so here Peter is getting the revelation knowledge, the endowment of who Christ is. Okay, so, um, um, so uh, Simon is symbolic of the man of the flesh, but Peter is symbolic of the man of the spirit. For this reason, and in, uh, in the next verse, Jesus changes his name to Peter, which in the Hebrew is uh, Kipha. Um, the Hebrew definition is a hollow rock, Petra, which means an apostle like Christ. So, um, having said that, the supernatural reign of revelation of the Holy Ghost, that Jesus was the Christ that was given to Simon Peter to host his presence to the, uh, to host his presence to the church. So that the church would have the same revelation experience that Simon did while Jesus was gone to be with the Father. Okay, Jesus is not here anymore physically. However, how was Christ revealed? Okay, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 13, um, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 10, a man named Cornelius was a devout man of God praying so much that the angel of the Lord came to him and said, Send two men to Joppa, and he will show you what thou hast to do. And at the right, uh, at the, uh, so when Peter showed up, preaching about how God the Father anointed Jesus Christ with Nazareth, now, all of a sudden, he's able to feed the sheep. Okay, Jesus said, Feed my sheep. If you love me, feed my sheep. He didn't say that to anybody else. I mean, I'm not saying he didn't, but according to the scriptures. Okay, so as he's preaching the gospel to Cornelius, he gets a fresh encounter with Jesus Christ. Okay, flesh and blood did not reveal that to him. Peter did not reveal that to him. But the Father revealed it to him through the ministry, the apostolic ministry of Peter. Okay, so anyways. Um, <clears throat> and upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell should not prevail against it okay um verse verse 18 and i say unto thee thou art peter and upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell shall not be 
prevail against it. Upon this rock, what? Upon this revelation knowledge, upon which is the, the revelation knowledge of Christ always brings the presence of Jesus Christ. That's where your authority is. That's where your power is. All the power and authority is given to him. Okay? And um, because he says in verse 19, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Without the presence of Jesus, you ain't got no keys. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Okay, what whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Okay. Um, verse 18. And also I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay. So Peter, because Peter had the revelation knowledge of Christ, therefore carries the God-given grace, the ability to lay the foundation of Christ to his sheep by feeding them spiritually. Okay, by revelation, by the Spirit of God. All right. Let's and I'll prove that to you in scriptures. Let's go to First Corinthians. I'm sorry. Yeah, First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine. Let's talk about the ministry of Apostle Paul for a second here, for a little bit. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. Paul speaking. For we are laborers together. If you're a laborer in Christ, you're not laboring alone. Okay? Isolation is a form of witchcraft. Okay? Um, uh, for we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. Verse 10, according, see that word there, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, Paul says. You mean to tell me I'm not God's husbandry, I'm not God's building without the grace that's on your life, Paul? Yes, because in the Philippians chapter 1, Paul says you are partakers of my grace. Very important to have an apostolic foundation. If you don't have one, eventually you will need apostolic counsel for your marriage, your ministry, or friends, or whoever. You're going to need it whether you realize it or not. Okay? So, um, according to the grace which is given unto me as a wise master builder, without the grace to minister, to preach, teach, and heal, you are not a wise master builder. Okay? According... To the grace given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereupon. Another who? An whether it be apostle or prophet or a teacher or an evangelist, another one built upon. Okay, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Back to the revelation knowledge. Jesus is the Son of the living God. Okay. It's easy to hear that Jesus is the Son of the living God, but to receive it in the Spirit. Because if anybody denies that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, they're none of His, according to the book of Revelation. All right. Verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, which is of Christ, Gold, silver, precious stone. Okay, the Bible says in Proverbs, seek for wisdom, seek for her as silver okay uh gold silver precious stone okay now wood hay and stubble is not the foundation because it will be burned up according to verse 13 and 14 okay every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abideth which he hath built thereupon he shall receive a reward mm. there's a lot of preachers who are not there are a lot of ministers that are going to make it to heaven but they're not going to receive a reward my goodness um if any man's work shall be i'm sorry if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall uh, shall be burned I'm sorry, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet as by fire. 